watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about my beautiful banana tree here. So I don't know if it's a tree or a plant actually, but um, this year I decided to uh, grow my own uh, banana tree. Um, the reason for that was because we have a pool which you can't see right now, but we wanted to add this sort of tropical feel to the backyard and I picked this this particular tree up uh, from Home Depot for about I think it was $35 and the thing that caught my eye was this this is a variety that's cold hardy as as you may know I live in Canada in Ontario and bananas are definitely definitely not native to our climate here and this is a particular variety that I will uh, put in the uh, description uh, below this video uh, the exact name but this particular variety is from I believe um, from Japan and it is considered a little bit more cold hardy a little bit more appropriate for our Canadian uh, weather of course this is not for producing fruit this is more so for the foliage and just the, the natural the beauty of, of the, the plant itself when I purchased this earlier this year, this was probably only about two feet high. And since then I have been able to make multiple smaller banana trees or plants. And as you can see down here below, uh, we have a few small ones that we will try to uh, separate from the tree and grow indoors. But as you can see, this is, uh, this is a pretty sturdy, sturdy tree here and one of the reasons why I'm making this video is to show you how you could potentially save this, winterize this, or overwinter this particular tree and have it come back every year. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to be trying to do and let's get into it. First thing that we're going to be doing here is trying to separate some of these baby, um, baby banana plants from this bigger tree and I find the easiest way to do this is just remove remove uh, some of the excess mulch. I have here uh, large chunks of, of, of cedar uh, chips and what I'm going to try to do is just remove this as clean as possible without damaging it too much and let's see so there's one right there. I don't know if this is going to take, but you can you can try to put that in into some soil and see if it takes. And um, I'll go on the other side here and do the same. All right, so I have some simple shears here that I'm going to just use and cut off. There's another one. And here's another one here so these were actually quite deep and I didn't want to dig them down too much I don't think they're gonna actually grow but I'll show you some that I was able to remove in a better way um, later on next what I'd like to do is just remove some of these branches or leaves I should say off the the plant and I'd like to grow this uh, particular tree taller and taller every year. So I will show you later on, but I am going to try to maybe cut it off at this angle here, or I should say that height. And next year, what we're gonna see is when it grows back, it's going to start growing back from the center and not these here. These will probably just wither away. So this is so beautiful. It's a shame that I'm cutting these, but um, I do want it to come back before the frost or come back every year. And I want to do this before the frost. Otherwise it could get damaged. All right, almost done. I just want to show you this. And just like how 
beautiful these this foliage is we had a storm a few weeks ago and that's why all these leaves are sort of damaged the way they are but um they they are quite beautiful okay i'm going to use my small little knife here now and cut off uh this top part at about this level here and that's where i want to actually see growth starting to come next year so i'm going to use this serrated edge which will allow me to have a better cut actually smells like a uh, a banana it actually does smell like a banana which I'm not really surprised about but I was just it's just interesting to be able to grow these types of things in our climate okay so now I'm just gonna make it look a little bit cleaner just remove some of these and here there we go all right, so now I'm just putting back all this mulch that I had originally removed, putting it just back around the tree. There we go. Okay, so now what I wanna do is uh, I would, I, I want to actually bubble wrap this and uh, that will be the first part of the of the process is just wrapping it with bubble wrap. Now, I didn't go out of my way and buy uh, bubble wrap for this. Um, we have a bunch of stuff available. So it's not the ideal type of bubble wrap, but it'll get the job done. So here you can see the bubble wrap that I have available to me for free that I will wrap around. This is obviously the free stuff that I was talking about. But ideally, if I went and bought uh, bubble wrap, I would uh, buy it, uh, buy the one with the little round circular bubbles as opposed to this. But this, like I said, should get the job done. So what you want to do is you want to start wrapping this around the trunk of your tree. Oh, we have a little slug here. Just wrap this around as nicely as possible and this will allow it to breathe as well and hopefully protect it all right so i have some tape right here i will just tape some of it at the top right here go okay and let's get another piece right here and ideally I would put a separate piece up here that would protect it a little bit better but I'm just gonna I don't want to make more pollution by buying plastic wrap I'm just gonna use the one that I have available to me here so again you just want to wrap this around and continue wrapping it and I think I want to just have it wrap around up top again and now we can tape this on the bottom there we go that looks pretty good Oops, let's just tape from the top. One's from the top here. There we go. We can tape it again on this side here. There we go. Okay, so step one's done, which is wrapping it with the plastic bubble wrap. 
and step two will be putting this garbage bag upside down like so making a little bit of a hole and filling it with leaves and then just taping it all up and hopefully that will protect and overwinter this uh, this particular banana uh, tree slash plant and of course I'm gonna be posting an update video next year hopefully fingers crossed with this uh, this banana plant surviving so I'm gonna just quickly show you some of the uh, some of the plants that I had already uh, made with uh, or some of the smaller plants that I had already separated and uh, planted okay so here is one of the banana plants that I made from the banana tree in the back there this was done earlier probably in the summertime when I actually first got the plant this is three more that I just placed into this uh, container um, that I will be separating and hopefully uh, planting into the ground uh, some in this property some in my my uh, parents property now I don't know if these will actually take these are the ones that I cut from the back who knows but I'll try to put them in some soil and see if they'll take and I just want to show you um, I actually want to I'm curious too I'm gonna uh, remove this particular banana plant from the soil and see what type of growth happens in the bottom so I'm just gonna soften it here and actually I might not need to you can see there's a there's a root right here uh, in the bottom so I'm imagining that there's a bunch of these little roots that formed oh yeah there we go so this is from the plant in the back there and uh, a bunch of roots have already formed so this is this is established and so have the others uh, they have other the other ones have also established as well well I hope you uh, enjoyed this video um, if you did please like and uh, subscribe to my channel and I hope to make more videos for you in the future thank you for watching